Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. I am your caster for the match, Crit Chronic War Catalyst here. This is the round of 16 of the playoffs for 2015 here. And we have two lovely teams for you to see today. Those will be on the blue side, Amazon, Amazon. Amazon, of course, a company that allows you to buy things online like this beautiful microphone you're hearing me through right now. They are playing for Child's Play. Child's Play is, of course, a charity that brings children in hospitals and domestic abuse centers uh, the joy of gaming to help them reconnect with their childhood. Of course, if you're ending up in one of those places, especially at a young age, you've probably been through something fairly traumatic. So helping those kids reconnect with their childhood uh, and get, get back in the mindset of have, being a kid, having fun, enjoying your life again, being a little bit more carefree. Uh, through the magic of gaming, which we all know and love, if you're watching this, I would assume at least. Um, so that's a fantastic charity, and they are playing up against, on the red side, Storm 8. Storm 8 is one of the companies leading the way uh, in developing mobile game apps. They are playing for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Make-A-Wish grants a child, uh, grants a, the wish of a child uh, diagnosed with a life-threatening medical condition. And an amazing fact I found up when looking at, up uh, Make-A-Wish, they grant on average in the United States a wish every 38 minutes, which is insane. I had no idea Make-A-Wish was doing so much work. Fantastic to hear that. I'm very thrilled to see that charity uh, doing such great work so frequently. But without further ado, let's jump into the pick band phase here between our two teams. Of course, we're gonna see the bands coming out uh, from the blue side are Scion, Nidalee, and Hecarim. Of course, Scion, uh, very preferred pick here from the top laner of the uh, red side here. Though his Nasus was left open, we'll get back into that momentarily here. But the Scion was definitely a target ban there. Nidalee, of course, a uh, very strong uh, person in the jungle, even after those uh, recent tweaks that came into her kit. Certainly no stranger to the Nidalee. Uh, is evil funny bunny here for the red side uh, and finally Hecarim coming out Hecarim just very strong right now overall every top laner is going to be a little bit versed in him uh, as well as people in the jungle so uh, just a strong very standard band right there uh, for the red side the bands were Grave, Sivir, and Trundle uh, Trundle a something that I personally hadn't scouted too much but maybe uh, I didn't miss something in the uh, standard uh, rotations when I last checked here for the top laner of the blue side here so it'll be interesting to see uh, how well that Cho'Gath in the top lane for the blue side performs here and whether or not that Trundle pick will or that Trundle ban will make it into the next pick ban phase as well. A uh, little focus here on the uh, AD carry trying to ban out uh, Astro or gosh I, this is why I try not to pronounce names, because I'm so bad at it. We're trying to ban out the uh, AD Carries champion pool here with that Graves and that Sivir ban. Of course, Sivir and Graves, two champions we've seen uh, this AD Carry go off on many times. So though Callista and Jinx are uh, in that champion pool as well. And we do see, of course, he did end up getting that Callista, though. Notably, uh, the orders were switched. For those of you watching the live stream, you saw the pick ban uh, in the client itself. That Ari was first picked. And after the first round of picks from the red side, the Sejuani was picked up. Sejuani, definitely by far, from my scouting at least, Iron Sheep's number one comfort champion in the jungle here. So we'll uh, be looking to see some big plays here on the Sejuani for the blue side. Going to see if we can get um, some really strong Sejuani ultimates. Chain that CC with the Cho'Gath Q. Uh, and then, you know, just watch Callista start tearing away at people. Uh, of course, this... Red side is not very tanky. Of course, there is obviously the Nasus <laughs> going to become very tanky. Uh, but aside from that, the Shaco going to be very squishy. The LeBlanc, the Jinx, very squishy. Morgana, even if she goes more tankish utility items, uh, she's going to be able to be torn through quite a bit because uh, those aren't going to give her a lot of health. They may have some resistances here and there, but the supports typically don't have uh, nearly any HP. So, a very squishy team here. I would look to see the Callista go for more of a uh, Hurricane build because putting out those uh, uh, stacks onto multiple champions and then rending them off of multiple squishies is going to be a very strong play here from that Callista. She's going to be doing insane damage, especially 
if, like we said earlier, we can get that chain CC from the Cho'Gath, from the Sejuani, keep them locked down, keep them immobilized for long enough for Kalista to really get some stacks built up to make that rend go insane. And of course, we can't discount the Ari here. Ari, definitely a very s strong champion uh, for Leech here, so we're going to be able uh, to see some really strong catch potential here. As that is a comfort champion, we're going to be looking for those charms in the jungle to start off engagements. And if you get that, I mean, there's a there's a chance that if a charm begins an engagement, of course, the red side might just all in and try and uh, dive into that engagement as strong as possible here. As we see the beautiful skins loading up here. Uh, Shaco, of course, going to be able to just hop back, uh, deceive right over to somebody, start trying to get those backstab extra damage with that passive there. Nasus, of course, will just charge right in. Morgana, going to try and get in the middle of that, lock people down as much as possible with her ultimate. But, you know, there's there's not as much response because one of those people is going to be eating the charm should a charm actually land to start off an engagement here. Um, and whoever that is is going to take an immense amount of damage. Ari, of course, going to be doing immense damage to anyone who's charmed up with that uh, bonus damage coming in during the charm phase. So... We'll, we'll see how this goes off. If, if it, it seems to be that if the blue side gets their engagement started off as they want, that's going to be an issue. There's not much engage potential from this red side. Of course, the Morgana Q cannot be neglected here. Morgana, uh, if you start off with that Q from Morgana, you're going to have a bad time, <laughs> to say the least here. As we start off with the standard visual bug here, we are not actually 10 minutes into the game, <laughs> but we will see that. Uh, those champions loading in here within the next few seconds. But yeah, uh, as far as the blue side's composition is concerned, again, they they don't have necessarily the strongest engagement. Uh, the Sejuani needs to be really on point with landing those ultimates. The Cho'Gath Q is fairly easy to dodge if it doesn't have any zoning around it to force people into no. a corner there. Uh, as we see, it looks like there's going to be a... Uh, possible invade coming out from this red side. It looks like both sides are actually going to be headed to this bottom side of the map here. Now Cho'Gath is going to go up for a little bit of line of scrimmage, but there are four members strong of the blue side here. So we're going to see what comes out. They will be uh, positioned properly here with three members. Now four members into that tri-bush. They're going to be hanging off. That will be a Q coming out. It doesn't land on anyone and Perhaps looking to go in on this a little bit is the blue side after that Q is down. Get some good poke from the Callista here, but they are 4v5 until that Cho'Gath does show up here. The red side just going to think better of it and just going to back away here. Not going to get too much out of it. The, they do get a little bit of ward coverage here in that tribe brush. But now five members strong, the blue side going to push them out of their own jungle here. Uh, might look to lay down some wards. We do see only one trinket ward available on that Janet. She will throw it down there. So there will be a little bit of vision here should they choose to start the Gromp. Unfortunately, blue side hatching a ward there a little bit. It's gonna dive back into their jungle now. Cho'Gath gonna start heading up to that top lane. We'll make it there plenty of time here. It looks like uh, this will actually be a red buff start here for the Sejuani. You're gonna get a little extra solid leash here. Get going. And we see already the trades happening in this mid lane here. Uh, it actually looks like Ari getting the best of that one, despite LeBlanc being the one to dive in on that. As you see both junglers here starting the buff immediately. Shaco using those boxes to get a little extra backstab damage. A little bit more standard there than the Sejuani, but Sejuani gonna be able to clear out that red buff. Not too much trouble and just head on out. So we see not too much action here going on in the bottom lane just yet. Yeah, Jinx trying to use those Qs to get that early experience advantage here, possibly hit level 2 quicker as they're looking to shove this lane out as quick as possible. Unfortunately, Morgana did start that Q, so that pool not going to be able to do uh, some AoE damage onto those minions, but it looks like the level 2 should be coming in to this red side first. And there's a beautiful Q there, point blank, before the level 2 though, unfortunately for this red side, not able to get that last bit of experience to get that level 2 before that Q landed, but... You know, certainly take a good Q whenever you can get it, for sure. 
as Shaco is going to be spotted out in this jungle here. Looking to take that blue buff, but he's about to be collapsed upon. It's actually, uh, whoops, wrong buttons there. Let's look at this Shaco here. Really trying to contest this, but it, right before the Deceive, the charm lands. Shaco going to be spotted out here. He's in pretty deep. That box is going to do some work, fearing two people, but that Ignite already burning away the Cho'Gath there as well. That will be the first blood going over to the Sejuani, and unfortunately that Shaco play not working out as they anticipated here. Shaco, two alone in that jungle, Nasus and LeBlanc uh, just hanging out in their respective lanes, of course. Nasus not wanting to miss any of that coupon, definitely uh, an understandable decision there, but got a question the LeBlanc not coming to the aid of that uh, Shaco to try and at least get him some coverage so he can get out of there safely. But unfortunately that is just the way it happens sometimes. You go deep into the enemy jungle, sometimes it's just a little bit too risky and that's what happens. Uh, and that will be the first blood onto the Sejuani. Sejuani looking to punish the Shaco even more now. LeBlanc goes aggressive onto that Ari. Ari, beautiful charm, gonna land a lot of return poke onto that LeBlanc. And Sejuani now looking to capitalize on this. We'll dive in and gets the red buff with his smite. Or excuse me, with her smite. She does have a field where Shaco's going, she pings that out. Nasus is there now. Cho'Gath not coming yet, but Ari is in the vicinity. She is largely out of mana though, so this is mostly up to Sejuani. But there's the Ari, gonna deceive away at the last second is Shaco. Beautiful flash over the wall there to get out of there on Sejuani. But Ari is deep in enemy territory. She's gonna look to hide herself and get a nice back there. As we see in the bottom lane, the heal's coming out, and that will be the kill on to Morgana first. Beautiful here, the heal there to stay alive, just get enough time to get an extra uh, fuse uh, arrows into that Morgana, and then be able to rend her to death, and actually gonna force the flash on Jinx. With that gen around, even that Blinking red health bar gonna be too intimidating for that Jinx as that Janus Shield can come out all of a sudden make that Callista a little bit more tanky than you were expecting and then all of a sudden another kill on the Callista. So so far that is two to zero in the overall kills here. Uh, one onto the Sejuani, one onto the Callista. Callista definitely gonna enjoy uh, that boost and getting going here early on. Sejuani already going to have a little bit better clear time as Morgana being a bit of a pest there, interrupting that back. We're already seeing the item disparities coming out uh, from this as we see, of course, Shaco only has the boots uh, after his first back in that jungle, whereas the completed jungle item and boots and a little bit of health here with that ruby crystal coming in for the Sejuani. Whereas in the bottom lane, the most pronounced difference right now uh, is, of course, uh, just a single Doran's Blade pickup for the Jinx, whereas there's a Cutlass picked up by the Callista here. Going to be getting those uh, autos in even more, getting those rents to do even more damage. You see an er slightly early level 6 here before the Cho'Gath onto uh, the Masses here is... Going in, already burns the ultimate there, does LeBlanc, and that's a beautiful charm onto her! Sejuani not going to be able to get the follow-up damage needed, but that will be the passive of LeBlanc down as well, as uh, a inopportune back timing, I believe, though she was hanging out in lane quite a while, so she's going to have a lot of gold built up here. We'll see what she is able to pick up here, as that's the Codex. And some fairy charms here for a little bit of extra sustain going towards that Morella Nomicon here. You see Callista going aggressive with the Sejuani coming in. The binding does land onto the Janna, but that's a lot of stacks coming in for Callista here. She's not going to be able to get it. Using the Jinx to jump towards the Morgana, the dirtiest play I've seen on Callista in a while. Oh, the poor Jinx. Morgana's got to feel bad about that one, almost getting out of there, but Jinx used as a stepping stone. But hold that thought, actually, because here in the mid lane, we're going to see the last couple autos. No, there's the flash. Going to choose, uh, does not have the flash available to chase on the LeBlanc, so that's going to be Ari getting out with a sliver of health here. 
But uh, before that happened, of course, another two kills in this bottom lane. Another one for Callista and another one for Sejuani here. Not the start this red side was looking to see here. Amazon handles on, of course, very happy with this start. Chogath looking to take some trades here with the Nasus, but that Nasus sustain going to be too strong. You're going to force that Chogath away. As Callista looking for this little poke here and there, wherever she can get it. Gonna be caught up again is Janna. That's a beautiful twister. It hit, hits both, even though the black shield is gonna prevent the CC on a one. Jinx getting the favorable trade here. Janna forced to burn the ultimate. Gonna hang out to try and get the full heal, but that might have been a mistake. No, the Fate's Call gonna come in to make sure she doesn't take any finishing damage here. Jinx does not have that ultimate available yet. And Shaco gonna be able to finish off that blue buff. Unfortunately, not going over to the block there. So the Shaco is a little bit behind here, as we see, of course, the uh, jungle item already fully completed and enchanted with the Cinderbolt here for that Sejuani, whereas, again, not too far behind in the creeps with those two extra kills for this uh, blue side jungler here on the Sejuani. Going to be making all the difference in the world, as we now see Shaco only able to buy a single longsword. Not the back he wants to see, and that's very punishing on Shaco. Shaco tends to be, of course, a very feast or famine champion here, so uh, with only one death to speak of in his stats right now, that's going to be uh, very discouraging for this red side here. Of course, in addition to just uh, the now 2.5k gold lead that has developed here. Luckily for them, no champion or no turrets have been taken, though. Shaco getting quite low here. Ari not able to find him. Though that is a beautiful ultimate from Sejuani, and that will be the kill after all going on to Ari. Ari able to find him with that final Q. I spoke too soon there, and there's exactly what we were talking about in the champion select earlier on. The Sejuani, a very comfort pick champion here. Definitely showing the experience on the Sejuani there, as Nasus going to be chasing off this Cho'Gath. Does pop the ghost, so he's going to be able to get some follow-up damage. Cho'Gath going to flash over the wall. Not sure exactly where he's headed now, though. Gonna look to just try and circle around, take this Nasus on a run over to Ari. No, actually just gonna walk back into the top lane. Nasus gonna stop chasing there. But yeah, back to that play on the Sejuani. That ultimate there was absolutely beautiful. Catching the Shaco right as he came out of his uh, stealth there. Beautiful play. Hold that thought though, because here's Ari getting caught out a little bit. Here, speak of the Shaco. That's going to be enough damage with the LeBlanc in tow, and that will be the first kill of the game for this red side, going over to the LeBlanc. Definitely the champion you want it on if you're only going to get a few kills in the early phases here. Definitely put them onto that LeBlanc as much as possible. Get her going. And of course, the assist gold coming in for the Shaco going to be nice. Help him get to a little bit better places with his items. Going to be very helpful there. Here's a little block coming in. Gonna force the Fates Call early, though she will go back in, does Janna. Gonna force the retreat here, and that's Sejuani all by herself as we, for no apparent reason, have the camera shift to the top lane. Largely because there was mostly disengaged there. Great Q by Morgana, getting a lot of uh, return harass again onto that Sejuani. Gonna be the battle of the wards in the tri bush. They will eventually be swept out here by this blue side. Yeah, already, we already saw just now with that single kill onto LeBlanc. Already looking to roam. Already looking to try and create plays elsewhere. Unfortunately, diving into the queue, and there's the follow-up CC from the Jinx. And there's ultimate going to be blocked by the Janna. And that's actually says Wani getting the first kill. As we see in the top lane, the gank going to result into a kill onto Cho'Gath. Everyone quite low in this bottom lane. This is dangerous. Jinx going to get knocked up by the Janna. And that will be Callista. Getting another kill in this bottom lane. And all of a sudden, that Morgana, not feeling very safe out of her, gonna throw out a Q to try and zone her away so she can walk out of there alive and she will be able to do so. Ari actually looking to uh, chase here. The back's not gonna be too worried about, though actually, Calista does interrupt hers first and that's gonna mean everybody does. And will this Nasus be able to get away? It looks like 
yes, the charm, beautiful charm, keeping them back. And there's all that rend damage coming out from the extended auto attacks just coming in one after another. Beautiful play here by this blue side. Absolute fantastic team fight, or team coordination, I should say. Coming out to say, hey, you know, let's not risk backing here. Let's try and kite. Let's get our uh, top laner to come in with that teleport. We're going to be able to get the Ren stacks in. We're going to be able to get the damage we need. And this Nasus can't chase us. Though, of course, a very risky play. Janna and uh, Callista went very low there. But overall, the right play in the end, as we see that score now jump to an 8-2 to two lead. No turrets for either side yet. But a 4.5k gold lead in favor of the blue side here at nearly 14 minutes in. Calista going to be jumping forward immediately onto Jinx. Jinx going to be just barely making it out alive. No, the final auto attack does come in. And that is Calista showing her power now when she gets ahead with a BF sword. Those attack speed boots of Berserker Greaves and that Cutlass already built up. That is a Callista you must fear. You must respect that Callista. And you've got to stay back. As painful as it is, you've got to let yourself just be zoned by that Callista because of the hypermobility she brings in her kit. Absolutely no way to contest that in a realistic way early on when all you've got is the pickaxe on the Jinx. It's painful. As those situations are, which I know all too well. Hold that thought, actually a lot of bursts from this LeBlanc here, but beautiful Sejuani Ultimate into the follow-up CC as well, and that will be a kill onto this Ari over LeBlanc. And all of a sudden, I mean that's the one advantage that was had so far in this game was that kill onto LeBlanc to get her going. Nasus, of course, has a kill as well, but Nasus not the most snowbally champion, just gonna wait till he gets to the late game to get out of control here. But LeBlanc getting shut down there. Uh, well, perhaps not technically shut down, but not even allowed to get going to be shut down one day. <laughs> Gonna be already dying again there. And there's the Fates Call actually coming in on Janna. Beautiful follow-up twister there. And that's another time Jinx going down a little bit too far out, taking that CS. And, I mean, when you're alone as Jinx, just farming out your lane. And then the Fates Call comes in before you can even react. There's the Janna knocking you up. There's the Janna knocking you up with her own twister. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that, but just stand at your turn and watch the CS die from afar. You have to give so much respect to this really mobile team here. That's just, it's painful to do, and it just, it feels inherently like it can't be the right thing, but that's what's got to happen when you're 11 and 2 right now. Nearly 8k behind, excuse me, 7k behind in gold in total here. You've got to just bite the bullet there, let yourself fall, uh, fall a little bit further behind and just try and prevent the Callista from going insane. Try and prevent the uh, absolute nightmare Callista that we've seen in some other games. And if you can do that, I mean, you should have largely the late game to your advantage. You have Jinx, one of the most infamous late game hyper carries. You have Nasus, perhaps the most infamous <laughs> late game hyper carry. Um, Shaco, of course, gonna not be as strong in the later game, but I mean, just on the virtues of a Jinx uh, uh, Nasus alone, that should be enough. I cannot believe we gotta go back. I wasn't even paying the credence myself to those Ren stacks. Watch this Morgana here. She is so squishy right now. Has nothing built up but that sidestone. And with that, just two auto attacks on top of that Q from Callista. Gonna be plenty to take out Morgana. And just like that, Shaco back into retreat mode. This is absolutely an out of control Callista here. And Shogath 1v1ing the Nasus there with that true damage from the ultimate. And then we, and it's painful to say this, but you might gotta, you, you might need to start thinking about game two here if you're this red side. So hold that thought because Ari is gonna be caught, but there's a beautiful Sejuani ultimate. Sejuani always in the vicinity, 100% of the time. Always landing beautiful ultimates. And Jinx gonna be, no, not taken down just yet. Callista getting a little bit too aggressive there. Going way under the turret, trying to, uh, just uh, juggle through that aggro 
um, or excuse me, not juggle through the aggro, but dance through the aggro using that passive stay in range of Jinx, just get enough to take her out first, but in the end wasn't enough, and if there are some mistakes like that, if this Callista does get a little bit too cocky, that can result in some misplays possibly here, as of course Callista, with 7, 1, and 2, if she goes down from being a little bit too aggressive, gets a little bit out of position, there is still some hope for this red side here. But as we see the first turret, or excuse me, the uh, final turret, the final outer turret for this uh, red side goes down and makes that a 10k gold lead. It's going to be a very tough climb back into this game. Certainly all hope is not lost though, again. We see some kills going out to this red side. Hold that thought though, because here is Nightmare Callista. Despite all those minions, despite Jinx being able to have her BF sword now completed, um, nearly a Infinity Edge, still not able to deal with Callista in the slightest, and just gets taken out. I mean, that's just Callista in this match has become a painful reality of life. <laughs> There's no. No real uh, opportune way to describe it aside from that. Beautiful charm going into the return position. And there's a beautiful Foxfire, uh, excuse me, beautiful ultimate there from Janna to get that Q, or excuse me, from Janna. Seeing Janna taking the turret there, getting the credit. From Ari uh, dropping that last ultimate charge uh, to get that Q to return in the correct position. But there's Shaco sneaking in with that Deceive, unfortunately. In their own jungle, Sejuani is going to be able to take out LeBlanc. Sejuani so strong right now. 6-0-4. Oh, and, and again, like we mentioned during the kick man phase, that's why the Sejuani uh, needs to be respected by this red side here. Absolutely have to ban that out with how much of a comfort ban that it is for the red side here. Or excuse me, for the blue side. But also just the fact that it's performing so well in this game as a proof of concept. You know, again, I... You, this is something we've seen with Amazon and Amazon before. With their AD carry, it seems like the champion pool is so deep for their AD carry. Trying to ban out the ADC just isn't a viable strategy here. Uh, they can just pick up anyone else and still perform like this. Uh, it's not necessarily a guarantee that their ADC will go in, out of control, but I've yet to really see an AD carry that just seems unpolished for this uh, Amazon and Amazon team here on the blue side. So. Perhaps we'll see, instead of those two ADC bans um, from the red side that we saw this uh, champ select, perhaps in game two, we will see a bit more focus on that jungle, perhaps. Or maybe even that top lane is. Uh, Cho'Gath hasn't gotten too insane here, but of course, with that Rod of Ages start, not taking any punishment in this game. LeBlanc looking to get some return damage on Ari, who's going to be forced to burn that ultimate to get away there. All five members are here in this mid lane, but Blue, fairly grouped already, going to be able to fend off any attempts here as we see the dragon spawning on up. We might see an attempt here uh, for a trade of objectives. If the blue side goes to this Baron, we might see the red side try and sneak a Baron. It looks like they're going to opt not to risk it here, and they're just going to retreat, surrender that second dragon. Though so notably, uh, 22 minutes here, 21 and a half minutes, that is only the second dragon of the game. Both of them have gone over to this blue side, but not very quick dragons this game. Definitely going to be helpful for the red side here. As we see Shaco deceiving in, going to get a lot of damage on that, and that should be... Yes, Ari is going down. But regardless, even with just four members, with that Nightmare Callista in tow, they're going to just feel very safe here pushing up, taking this bear in hit. And just like that, there's super minions now spawning in this bottom lane. Going to be securing that dragon control in the near future. Actually, Callista jumping so far forward. There's the Sejuani ultimate. Not going to be able to get that last chunk of health on the Morgana, but blue side looking to finish here. Red side did not respond in time at all. There's four members here. You absolutely have to respect this. It appears that uh, Red side just sort of giving up a, a, the game at this point, thinking uh, they're going to just move mosey on into uh, game two here. 
as we see the Nexus does go down. Now will be game one of this series going over to the Amazon Hamazon team here on the blue side. As we look at the score screen here, uh, the story of the game obviously not not to underplay the perfect game Jan either, but the Callista, the Nightmare Callista and the Sejuani, perfect game on Sejuani, beautiful play coming out of that champion. I mean, this is why Iron Sheep is so respected on that Sejuani, uh, from at least my scouting, I've, I've got a lot of respect for that Sejuani, I think this is a very strong proof of concept here in, first, in the game one of this series. That Sejuani gonna absolutely have to be banned out in the coming games by the Storm 8 team here. Uh, but we'll not offer too much analysis here as the game is pretty straightforward, of course. Looking at the damage tolls, Callista, absolutely insane, could not be answered here. 15k damage, more, almost as much as any two members on the red side combined. So uh, we're going to be looking, uh, perhaps, if there are 80 carry bans remaining, that Callista is going to be swapped out uh, over one of those uh, Sivir or Graves bans, definitely, from this uh, Storm 8 team. And that's Sejuani absolutely must be pulling a ban or at least a first pick away of course the sides will be swapped in the coming up game too so we might see if that Sajwani or Kalista is left open a possible first pick away by this red side here uh, but without further ado we'll wrap up game one stay tuned on the live stream uh, as we will be hopping into game two here within uh, just a few moments. And thank you for watching if you're watching the archives. Game two will be following momentarily if you go ahead and go back to the channel and click game two, I guess. <laughs> but uh, we'll see you at game two.